you can you can put one or two in there. They just can't have like a whole. You may have your sign of uh, form. I have that in my office, or they should have some up here. Just get you to fill that out real quick, and we're good to go. Uh -huh. Did you say that name? Her name? Or my name? That um, It does. I'm not sure who. <laughs> Megan's charging her today, but I don't know who was charging her yesterday when he came in. But she's the one that did it yesterday. Megan, who was uh, the nurse or charge nurse for Mr. Jermaine Jones? He was the one that was here last night. Mm -hmm. Yes. The one that was brought in by Richard Jackson. Are y'all going to interview like the whoever was in charge of or giving him direct care? Yes. Okay. Who was giving him direct care? Well, Megan Jones not that well, I can give you the charge nurse, but she didn't take care of it. Um, if she didn't if she didn't have anything to do with her, that's her we don't need to talk to her. It's whoever had that right contract. That's fine. That's No, I left at 7 p.m. Okay. and he didn't get here until 8:48. Okay. Is there anybody that can tell us like what's the latest on him? Because we got a call that apparently he may not survive. So he's upstairs in shock trauma. If you wanted to go up to shock trauma, they could probably give you the information. Thank you so much. You're Thank you. Okay. Sure. And if I'm not mistaken, it should be the same curve from yesterday because they're on the 8 day stretch. Ooh. How you doing? Where are you at? Uh, all over. Oh, uh, okay. Let me let him know. Thank you. 
um, Williams, it's two E's, e, if, if that matters. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on with him? Because we got the call that he may not survive. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, he's actually fixing to go back. So, um, where do you want me to start? Like from the beginning? You know, yes, like he, he, so he was brought in per the record and he's brought in by Richmond County Sheriff's Office. Um, the, the note says that they um, reported that he was tased and that he fell after he was tased. Um, and then they were transporting him to the jail and he was acting normally until they arrived at the jail and as soon as he saw the jail then he faked a seizure. So I guess at that point, that's what the, the medical note says. Um, the, they brought him here, um, he was actively seizing, um, so he was intubated, and he was also not, not cooperating, not, um, but not, not oriented, just combative, you know, very, um, inappropriate, having to hold him, you know, down multiple, it says in the, the, the Richmond County had to come in with our security and, and hold him down okay. to sedate him and then to get him intubated. Um, so then the CAT scan showed very severe brain trauma. So he went right away, level one, to the operating room so that they could evacuate a big clot out of the brain, remove the skull. Um, Which side of the head was that on? Um, it, that was on the right. Um, but now we've gone back to a CAT scan this morning after surgery, and he has some, some more bleeding in an area that's popped up in the, in the back, so he he's needs another surgery now. Um, the family has arrived. Or, very upset. I was just talking to my manager. I was like, this thing, I feel like it's fixing the blow way up because they were calling people, you know, at least to just deny so, You know, I mean, it's, it's there. Okay. There are a lot of are anger out there. Yeah, that's what I was just talking to. Damien was my last manager. Just and I was just like, yeah, because they are, um, you know, I, we I had to, so I had not had any contact with any family okay. at all. So I was like, well, surely he, you know, he's 24. There has to be family somewhere. So there was a, a name in the chart. So this is next to Kim. So I called that number. That number was disconnected. So I reached out to Richmond County and I was like, you know, hey, y'all brought him in. And they are listed as the guarantor and, okay. and, and as the insured party as Richmond County Sheriff's in Office. Custody. Well, that's what I thought. You know, there was nobody, there was no officer with him. Right. So I wasn't sure if he, you know, but that's who was listed. Okay. So there was a phone number there. So I called that phone number because I was like, hey, I need family like this. You know, he's not doing well. We need, you know. So then uh, Major Pat Young called me back. Mm -hmm. um, and gave me a, a number for his mother, um, which was the same number that was in the chart, different phone number. I called that, and that number was also um, inactive. That's Miss Gaines. Yes, Miss okay. Gaines. Um, so at, at that point, um, I uh, reached out to her on Facebook. I did a Facebook Messenger, which we do a lot. That's like fun. sometimes mm -hmm. we get patients that are, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have families for days, and so um, anyway, and so she contacted. I just you know said. Um, I didn't say anything about any patient or anything. I just said, could you please call me at the hospital and left the phone number. And okay. she called. Okay. And, um, and her name was in the chart as the next to Kim. So, mm -hmm. um, but that's how they found out, apparently, that he was here. Um, so, of course, they're very upset, you know, about, about that as well. That's why I'm saying they're just out there um, very distraught but very angry. Yes. And her name is Kim. Something earlier you said they did another CAT scan a day and there was another bleed where? Um, I mean, I'll have to get the neurosurgeon okay. to talk to you specifically about that because I know most of the um, bleeding was on the right side mm -hmm. um, and now there is a little bit of bleeding um, from what he was just telling the, the mother on the, the left kind of posterior right he physically pointed here um, okay. and told the mom that's where they were going to go in this time the first time was, was here um, and now there's a little bit back here okay. when um, you guys got a hold of him. Can you tell me a little bit about, just on your knowledge, how something like this could have happened? Well, I wasn't here when he came in, okay. so I don't, I don't, I did not see what he was like okay. um, or any anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I received him this morning at 7 a.m. when he had already been to one surgery. Gotcha. So he was already intubated, you know, on the ventilator um, and sedated. Are you are you able to look at the chart? Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that's why, how I was trying to kind of figure out. I mean, you know, it, I was told he was brought in by the police. Um, but then, you know, I had to kind of go digging through the notes to kind of that, which we, we do all the time. We have to do all the time with our traumas. Like, you know, mm -hmm. we have to kind of figure out and piece together and try to, you know, because we're, we're all the time spending time trying to find families, track families mm -hmm. down, you know. 
Um, so we've kind of gotten good at that, I guess. I was just asking that because they can tell you what surgeon performed the surgery. Yeah, we'll probably get that too. Mm -hmm. um, as far as any kind of blood work, do you know if any blood work was drawn on Oh, them? yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All of our traumas, we have a what we call like a rainbow. It's like a standard protocol for all of our traumas okay. that um, was sent. Is there any way you can look at that and just see if it's come back as far as if he had anything in the system? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, it is back, and I mean, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't know what I can... Um, release? Uh, yes, release. I guess okay. that would need to be something that Damien might be able to help me with, um, you know. And just because I know the... A little bit of the circumstances. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure. Yes, ma'am. You're, you're, you're probably fine. You're probably fine. Yes. So from what we've gathered from just looking at things, he did get tased. Mm -hmm. He does fall. Um, but then there was a part in the vehicle where we're trying to figure out what caused his seizing. Would that trauma cause that seizing? Um, that it, head it, trauma? It, it could. Okay. Yeah. And I can get one of the, the neurosurgeons to talk to you, um, you know, in greater detail about this, obviously. But, um, and blood in the brain usually is an irritant that can cause a, a seizure that's one of our because a lot of our patients that come in with these brain injuries mm -hmm. um we put them on a seizure prophylactic because we anticipate that they could possibly seize when we know that there's ble bleeding in the brain i mean even though ladies that fall down the stairs and hit their head you know they get put on a seizure medicine because the blood in the brain can be an irritant and it can cause um a seizure okay is there any way that we can also collect the blood once you guys get done with it collect the blood mm -hmm. and do you whatever was drawn from him oh, that, no, usually y'all um will have a warrant yes. um that sure. we would so um typically that will go to our lab too because yes. it's in the lab now right but then usually they will so y'all don't want blood like for for me to draw blood for y'all now y'all don't want no. any specimen no, 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 y'all no, no. want the blood that was originally mm -hmm. when his originally Tip came in and the reason why I say that is because we had an issue before where we requested it to hold on to it and we bring a warrant for it mm -hmm. and then they've already trashed it. So just if you can make a note that we are going to get it. Yeah, okay. So we can call the lab and ask them if they can make sure that they hold the specimen. Yeah. Um, because they do usually only hold the specimens for, for, so, segment, right. for so long. Which right. Is and we'll get the warrant as fast as we can. But oh, sure, we just yeah. want to go ahead and collect it yeah, and yeah, just yeah, have yeah. them know that we are coming to get it. Okay. Um, yeah, if you, you want to... I guess call whoever is in head of the lab and make sure they know that. Anything, what is the latest on him today? Um, like as far as prognosis, or, mm -hmm. um, so he's, he's he's very very critical. So we we monitor um, you know what we call ICPs, intracranial pressures. That gives us an indication of um, the amount of edema that's in the brain. Okay. So um, and according to the neurosurgeons, also his. Um, Right, just because I just came from the family meeting with his mother, so I heard you know the neurosurgeon telling his mother um, that his his brain looked very 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 bad. Um, there was a great deal of swelling, um, so much so that after the surgery they could not put the bone back back on, which is common. It's you know they leave the the bone off to allow for that swelling, and they put a drain into the ventricle to drain off CSF, okay. um, and that's that drains what we monitor the pressure through. Um, so that pressure, um, you know, normally we like to see it under 20. It's been 40 to 45, despite the skull being off, yeah. despite him being on mat. We, we've chemically paralyzed him. We've given him three, two different sedatives in a, in a very, very, very high amounts of these medicines to try to help um, with that swelling. And despite all of these issues, and now the fact that he has rebled in this new area and has two new bleeds around the previous area, um, it is considered a, f a futile surgery that they're going to do to go back, but they, um, you know, the words I gave the, the family was we want to do everything we can, we want to give him every chance, um, you know, with or without this chance. They did not physically say the words he would probably die, just mm -hmm. because I think the emotion in the room and the anger was mm -hmm. already very, high. you know, and we were trying to just kind of, you know, um, but it does not look very good for his chances of survival. Gotcha. His clothing he had on? Um, it's locked up downstairs. Okay. Um, his cell phone, I believe he had a cell phone, and then um, some clothes were inventoried. And um, anything that they come in with, when, when we um, you know, take possession of the patient, anything they have on them, they inventory and lock up. So. Is that what y'all have? It was the security. It'd be security. in the property room, yeah. So I don't know, um, you know, like there's no wallet or anything like, like that. So I don't know. Um, but this is what we have. Okay. We'll probably collect all of that. Sure.
Okay. Anything else? Anything else that I might have forgot to ask you that I need to know? No. Okay. Um, I mean, they did, um, you know, it was noted that he had some uh, marks around his hands, you know, most likely from the handcuffs, and they did do x-rays, um, you know, of, of those and some other x-rays. Um, I mean, he, he really had a full body in what we call a pan scan. I mean, they, they CT his head, neck, chest, abdomen, um, m you know, x-rayed multiple, um, you know. But no, um, other, no other injuries anywhere no. else but his head? Yes, that is correct. Okay. He had one little teeny little abrasion on his shoulder, one little abrasion kind of um, back here at the nape of his neck, mm -hmm. and then other than that, um, I mean, he really doesn't even have much bruising, or you know, um, yeah. Okay. And is the neurologist available? The nurse surgeon, sure. Yes. <coughs> um, we'll page Doctor Doctor Coy again and see if he um. Because he had, he was actually the one that did the the surgery last night. Okay. So, and like I said, we just came from the family meeting. So he was like, I mean, he saw his brain. You know, the, the now who would we need to see again about getting that blood? Your lab. Yes, and um, my nurse manager. Um, this is Damian Priestman. My nurse manager is going to get in touch with the lab. Um, yeah. The person who runs the lab. Okay. Um, can you? Um, I don't know if you can or not, but I was just going to ask you. Can you scan his? blood results and just see if there's anything else in the system? Um, I mean, I don't know. Do y'all, I mean, like, I mean, I'd be happy to do it right now if there, I mean, do we yeah, have a warrant to release that? I do like, not have a warrant. Uh, That's what I'm asking. Yeah. I don't um, know how that works. Typically with the, um, since those are released by the medical records office, uh -huh. more than likely every agency is requested to have a warrant uh -huh. unless it's... Consent. Yeah, unless it's consensual, um, since he's um, out of it. Um, it is Koi K O I, and it's is it Win? Win. Win. It's G and. I'll tell you. And I can actually have a officer escort y'all to the medical yeah. office building so you okay. can speak with the supervisor and know exactly what needs to be done. Okay. okay. And who would we need to see about getting those clothes again? Um, we will stop by the property room. Okay. And they should just be able to turn it over to y'all since it's an investigation. Um, most of the time we'll collect it if it's requested as evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody requested it as evidence, so it's just turned over to property. I got you. <laughs> you know, I'm not so young anymore. <laughs> okay, it's um, Koi spelled K H O I is his first name. Because at some point, at some point, we're going to um, 